Yo, we are gonna do relations and functions today. So like I say at the beginning of every video, you definitely wanna make sure that you're taking some notes because staring at me doing the math is not gonna get it to you by osmosis, okay? So you definitely wanna make sure that you get into it. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching math with Miss B. Okay, so first of all, we want to talk about a relation. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. So here is an example of a set of ordered pairs, right? So you can represent relations like ordered pairs. You can represent them with mapping diagrams. You can represent them with tables. And you can also represent them with graphs. My mouse key. Okay, so let's say that we have a set of ordered pairs. The set, the first thing that you need to know is that the set of all first values of the ordered pairs is your domain. The second thing that you need to know is that your range is the set of all second values of your ordered pairs. So when you have a set of ordered pairs, the first number is represents your domain, the second number represents your range. So you have domain range, you can also represent them as x, y, and you can also talk about them as your inputs and your outputs. Those all mean the same thing. So domain, domain is your x values is your input, all the same thing. Your range is your y values and your output. Those are all the same thing. So you can use all those words to describe all those things. So now, sometimes we have functions. So functions are a type of relation. So a relation such that each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. And in layman's terms, what that basically means is x values slash domain values do not repeat. That's what I always say. If you're trying to figure out if something is a function, you have to look for unique x values. So x values cannot repeat. If they repeat, that means it's not a function. So when we're looking at our specific problem, I can see that my domain values are 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. All of those are unique. None of them repeat. So guess what? This relation is a function. So now we're going to go through a bunch of different relations and we're going to decide if they're functions. So voila, we have three examples. So on this slide, we have example number one, looking at the domain, just the domain values or just the X values. I can see that I have a one, a two, a three, and a four. All of those are unique. So guess what? Yes, this is a function. And because every X value corresponds to one Y value. Um, number two, when we're looking at it, we have a five, we have a six, we have a seven, we have a seven, and we have an eight. What does that tell me? No, it's not a function because the x value 7 corresponds to two y values. I cannot have any repeating x values. No repeating x values are allowed. And because of that, that's what makes that not be a function. So now we're going to look at the third one. We have a 0, we have a 3, and we have a 4. So each x value is unique. So guess what? Yes, these are a function. Yay, us. Okay, so now we have mapping diagrams. So we're gonna do example number one. So when I have my mapping diagrams, I have, I have a one, I have a two, I have a three, I have a four, and each of them has one arrow pointing to the six, the eight, and the nine. So is this relation a function? Yes, it is a function. Now looking at example number two, notice I have a five, a six, a seven, and an eight. But what do you notice about that seven? It has two arrows pointing from it. So that means that that X value repeats. It's used twice. Anytime an X value is used twice, that means some, that thing is not a function. So last but not least, we're gonna look at example number three. So we have a zero, a three, and a four. And when I'm looking at those X values, I have one arrow from the zero, one arrow from the three, one arrow from the four. So that tells me that yes, this is a function. Whoop, whoop. Today's drink of the day is, what is this? Alkaline water. Is the relation a function? So now we're looking at tables, because remember there are several ways that you can look at a function. You can look at it in ordered pairs, you can look at it mapping diagrams, you can look at it 
um, uh, tables and you can look at it on, on graphs. So looking at these tables, looking at my x values, do any of them repeat? Good, we get in the hang of it. Okay, look at the middle example. Do any of those x values repeat? Did you say seven? Then you got it correct. Yes, so this is not a function because the x value of seven repeats itself and we're not about that. And then last but not least, I'm looking at my x values. I have a zero, I have a three, and I have a four. Did you say function? Then you would have gotten it right. Yay, cheers. Okay, so now, um, we are going to look at equations. So when we look at equations to determine if an equation is a function, I have to isolate y. So we're going to move x squared to the other side by subtracting x squared, and then that's going to give me y equals negative x squared plus 4. Yes, this is a function because y values are unique to an x value. Okay. So let's look at the second one though. Notice that the equation is x squared plus y squared equals four. I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. Now I need to get y by itself. How do I do that? How do I get rid of that little squared? Well, I have to square root it, right, to cancel it out. And remember when you square root something, you always get a plus and a minus in your answer. So that plus and that minus indicates that there would be two y values for one x value and that's not gonna work because that means I would have to repeat the x um, to more than once to get it attached to the different y values. And when we repeat x values, that's a no-go. So basically when you're doing equations, if y equals plus or minus something, that means it's two, that's a repeat. We don't do that here. All right, so we have is the relation a function. We have two examples again. Um, and remember when you're looking at equations that you have to isolate y to be able to figure out if it is uh, a function uh, or not. So what I'm going to ask is that you pause the video and you try these two on your own. Pause the video. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you paused it. When I isolate y... Look, yes, it is a function because the y values are unique to the x value. And the second one, I'm going to take the square root and I'm going to get y equals a plus or minus. So that's going to be a big fat no. Is the relation a function? Graphs. Okay, graphs are my favorite part of figuring out if something is a function just because I'm very visual and I like visuals. So when we are using, when we are finding a function using graphs, what you're going to look for first is you're going to look for something called the vertical line test. If a vertical line touches a graph at more than one point, that graph is not a function. So remember we talked about repeated x values. You're always looking for repeating x values. You're always looking for repeating x values. Well, so we're going to draw a vertical line, okay? So our vertical line that we're going to draw So we're going to notice that when I draw a vertical line, that it touches two points. And those two points have an x value of 2, comma 3, and then another x value of 2, comma negative 3. What does that mean? That means that that x value repeats itself. That negative 2 x value repeats itself, okay? And you, we cannot have repeated x values. So guess what? That is not a function. That is not a function because you can see that that vertical line indicates two repeat, a repeated x value of negative 2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the next one. When I swipe that vertical line across that entire graph, what do I notice? It doesn't matter where the vertical line is. It never touches more than one point on that V, that absolute value shape. So that is going to be a function because the vertical line uh, never touches more than a single point. Is the relation a function? Okay, so when we're looking at these next two graphs, what I'm going to notice, I'm going to swipe that line across. 
and I'm going to notice that no matter where the vertical lines are, guess what? It never touches more than one point. So this is a function. We love to see it, okay? The vertical lines touch only a single point. So now we're gonna swipe the next vertical line across. And no matter where the vertical line is, it only touches a single point. So guess what? This is a function. So now we're gonna keep doing this process over and over again, right? So here we go, swipe across. I'm drawing vertical lines no matter where my vertical line is. Guess what? It is a function. So that's great for us. Now let's try this next one. Let's swipe a vertical line across. Great, we can definitely see that in this one, I'm gonna touch more than one point with that vertical line. So guess what? When I do that, I see that negative one, negative one, both of those X values repeat, so this is not a function. All right, so now I have this one, when I swipe it across, what do I notice? Well, it's definitely gonna be a function because that vertical line only touches one single uh, point, no matter where it is. This one is different. It's like a sideways version, so I can definitely tell that when I swipe that vertical line, guess what? This one, I'm touching not just two points, I'm touching three points all at the same time, and you can tell that you have a one, a one, and a one in each of those points, so the X value repeats. That is not gonna work for us. So that one was not a function because the repeated X value, remember, you're looking for repeated X values. It's not gonna work. Okay, this is a funny looking function. This is a step function, an integer function. Um, and so we would do the same thing. We would swipe that line across. And if I draw, no matter where I draw vertical lines, remember open circles are not included values. So even though the line is going through an open circle and a closed circle, remember open circles are not included. So this actually is a function. The next one is just a bunch of dots. But when I swipe the, the vertical line across, what do I notice? Well, at the very end there, I'm gonna go through two dots and they both have an X value of five and that is a repeated X value. So this is not a function because the vertical line touches more than one point at a time. You guys did it. That's the end of the lesson. That's how you figure out if something is a function. Ta-da! Not too bad, right? Um, what do I always say? Go back through the video. See if you could do the examples without my help. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!